Femme say everyone and happy Tuesday. I can't believe it's almost the end of the month. It's pretty crazy. Um, I don't know where July went. It's pretty nuts. I've uh, been really enjoying the weather. It's been really beautiful. Got this in my backyard with some incredible friends. And so I think we've got to make use of every ounce of sun in summer we have. And so I'm very humbled and thankful you know, for that. I think um, I've been trying to focus on living in gratitude and doing a lot of things that, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for, whether it be spending time with friends or family or, you know, making those plans. I think them, sometimes we're like, oh, we're busy. And then we forget about these blocks of time in the day that we can actually use to, you know, build those relationships or reconnect with people, even if it's just over the phone or over Zoom, or even if it's on an amazing patio, <laughs> which is really, really lovely. Uh, but I um, just wanted to, of course, welcome everybody today in a good way uh, by starting with the land acknowledgement, because um, it's so, so important to acknowledge where we live and where we are and where we make our home. Um, and I am not from here. I am uh, Cree, Anishinaabe, and Métis. So I am from Muscat Lake Cree Nation, which is in Saskatchewan and Treaty 6 territory. But I've been living here in Mohinstis in Treaty 7 territory for many, many, many years. Um, I would move, I'd move back and forth a couple of times, but um, Calgary always has just brought me back. There's something really magical here. Something about, you know, um, Milkins just being elbow where the Bow River and the Elbow River meet. There's something very powerful about this place that just, it sings to me, it calls to me, and it helps me really, um, you know, heal and grow and be able to help others as long, along my path. So I'm very, very thankful for those gifts and for living here. And so I always acknowledge um, the people who've been here for thousands upon thousands of generations. I acknowledge the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gainai and Pagani. I acknowledge the Sarsi Dene from Tsutsuna and the Stony Nakoda from Morley, which includes Chiniki, Bears Paw and West Bay First Nation. And I also acknowledge the Métis uh, of Region 3. This is why I proudly wear my Métis sash. That is that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous culture. And it's really important that we acknowledge the relationship that we need to have with each other. Anyone who lives here, we're part of that relationship. We're part of that family. We're, we have a relationship with the land and we have a responsibility to live in a good way. And we have a responsibility to honor the people that have been here before. Their teachings about this land and the stories about this land and some of the stories, they resonate with us so deeply. And it is so important that, you know, we maintain that oral history, that we learn that oral history and that we can bring um, elders and knowledge keepers from many different places to be able to share those stories with us. Because I think if you're at a place without understanding the stories behind it, you're missing something huge. And so, um, to welcome everybody into the circle today like I do all the time I wanted to share the Cree welcome song so traditionally when we share uh, songs and stories uh, or when we share songs we always sing in rounds of four down of the four directions of the medicine wheel uh, but this song is a little different we actually sing it in rounds of three and that's to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today because in a circle we're all connected there's no beginning there's no end no one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle just like in the hoop of life so it teaches us to honor each other for those differences because if everybody was exactly the same nothing would ever get done and the world would be really boring and we'd always run out of the same thing at the grocery store and music would be incredibly dull <laughs> so we need all of those differences and all of that diversity and all of that really vibrant community to uh, create something incredibly beautiful and inspiring uh, from artists that bring that forth or from, you know, the caregivers who help maintain that community, from the parents, from the teachers, from the doctors, and even the lawyers we need. But all of those people bring together a community that's thriving and strong. And so this song honors all of those people. It honors all of our gifts and it teaches us not to judge people for the path that we're on or that other people are on because we don't know what they're going through. But their path has led them to us. And so it's important that we just stay open and welcoming and are able to be receptive to the teachings that we can learn from each other. And this song, um, it's from the Napaha family from Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. And so I honor that family for keeping this song and 
for keeping the story of the song and the spirit of this song alive. Because for so many generations, we couldn't. We couldn't share our languages, we couldn't share our stories, we couldn't share our songs. And so whenever I share these songs and stories, I am humbled. I'm humbled that we've come to a place where it's not only acceptable, but it's celebrated. We have a lot more, um, we have a lot more work to do and a lot further to go. But to think of where we were even 10, 20, 30 years ago, it's it's night and day. And I know that as we keep progressing forward more and more and more, we're going to see a better world for all of our future generations. And so I'm very humbled to share this song in a good way. And Mia Sin, which is the Cree welcome song, uh, it doesn't just mean welcome, it also means beautiful. And the reason we sing it in rounds of three is to keep that circle open, to keep that circle strong. And so if we must leave, that circle lets us out. If people come in throughout, then that circle lets us in. So it's never broken. It's just always expanding or contracting like our hearts, like our minds. We need to keep opening and flowing. When we breathe, our chest opens and closes. When we look at the world around us, it contracts and um, you know, expands. And so there's a beauty to that. And this is why we honor the song in the way we do. And so this is Mia Sin, the Cree Welcome song. I will stand up to sing it. Me asin, me asin, to share um if there's anything that resonates with you fantastic um but the first thing i'd like to do today is just smudge um and so when we smudge a lot of kids are like what's smudging so smudging is our way of praying and all prayer is it's setting an intention it's asking for the things that you need and get rid of the stuff that you don't need 
And so um, it can be really powerful. It's a good way to just put you back into your being, to balance everything out, to really um, appreciate things and to heal. It heals you in such a beautiful way. So whenever I'm really stressed out, um, I will smudge and I'll feel like a million times better. It'll be fantastic. Also, um, whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'll smudge and it'll just put things into perspective. And so I'm not so overwhelmed. And I'll be like, oh, okay, that too shall pass. Um, and it just really puts all of our pieces back together. So sometimes I feel very scattered. And when I smudge, it just pulls everything back in. Um, when we're really uh, fearful or stressed out, uh, depending on what medicine we use, it can actually help us make better decisions, um, help calm our mind, help calm our heart, help calm our bodies, and of course, connect us to creator, which is the most important thing. Um, I'm going to actually talk about my smudge bowl first. Usually I talk about it at the end, but I'm going to talk about it first. So this is my smudge bowl. And this is an abalone shell. And so I'm very thankful for this shell. It was gifted to me by uh, my friend um, Sarah. And I'm very thankful for that. And uh, when we are gifted a shell, it's very, very sacred. It's very special. Uh, we can occasionally buy them for ourselves. But just like our medicines, it's better when we're gifted them. So the shell itself, um, it's the smudge bowl. And so it represents water. We have all four directions in the smudge bowl, just like we have all four of our medicines that are set out um, and that we honor. We have the four parts of our being, which is our mind, our heart, our physical body, and then our spirit that kind of fuels the whole thing. We have, you know, the four days, uh, pardon me, the four times of the day. So we have the morning, the afternoon, the evening, and then the night. We have the four seasons, the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter. And we have, of course, fours all around us. Uh, we have the four times of our lives, our childhood, our um, adolescence, our adulthood, and then, uh, of course, our elderly years. And so four is so powerful that we have all four directions represented in this much bowl. So the element of water is represented in the bowl itself. It's also considered the women's medicine because it holds us. Um, whenever we put the medicine in the bowl, so whatever medicine that we're using, as soon as it goes, as it goes into bowl, in the bowl, it represents earth. And so that's that grounding, that's the medicine, because it grows from the earth. And so it connects us to our physical body. When we light it on fire, it represents, of course, fire. Um, and it represents our mind medicine. And so when we learn something, there's a little synapses that fires in our brain, um, and it's that burning desire to learn, it's that spark of creativity, it's the things that really charge our mind. And so that's what that fire can access to. That's also um, that masculine medicine. So it's all about balance. We have the feminine medicine, we have that masculine medicine. And so, because um, we're a balance of all of those things, so it's important to honor that balance. We have two spirit people who are that outward uh, representation of that balance. And so they can flow more freely and they recognize that masculine and feminine within themselves. Um, and so this is why teachings oftentimes will come through to spirit people like myself. Um, and it's a gift. It's a gift to be able to share that. Um, and I'm very, very thankful that a lot of our two spirit teachings are starting to come back because they are coming through those teachers uh, that are meant to share them. Those lost ceremonies are starting to come back as well. So it's really a blessing. Uh, and then the last medicine is air. And that's that smoke that comes up to creator. That's our prayers. That's that energy. And so I'm very, very thankful to be able to share my smudge bowl with everyone today. And thank you, Sarah, for my lovely smudge bowl. Um, smudging sometimes will get the bowl a little bit hot. So I have my lovely handy dandy. Um, leaf to go underneath it's just a little metal leaf and it kind of grounds that heat uh, a friend of mine forgot one time to put um a bowl or a plate or anything under her smudge bowl and we were doing a prayer vigil and um the sage that we had in there was burning again and again and i was just continuing to burn non-stop for about an hour and a half and of course her shell got a little hot but she had it on the corner of her folded Pendleton blanket. And so now she has four beautiful holes <laughs> melted right through. So uh, yeah, always put something underneath your smudge bowl, just to be safe. Um, the medicine that we're gonna be working today, uh, working with today is sage, uh, that's the women's medicine. Um, I'm gonna just share quick little medicine wheel teachings. Uh, just, I always lay out all the medicines to honor them because I think it's really important to all honor that balance. Even if we're not using all of that medicine, uh, it's important to honor those medicines. And so I'm gonna slide over here. And uh, the first medicine that we have, I have it in a couple places, 
This is sweetgrass. Sweetgrass. So lovely. So sweetgrass, um, these are just my teachings. If it makes sense to you, awesome. If you've heard other teachings that resonate with you more, that's fantastic. It's really about uh, learning from many, many different people, many different elders and knowledge keepers um, and storytellers and coming up with what really resonates with you. So it's not right or wrong. It's just different. And that's okay. So um, in my teaching, um, sweetgrass being the men's medicine, represents our mind, it represents fire, it's the summer, it's our childhood. This is also considered the sweetest medicine or the children's medicine. This smells really good. Uh, and just like our teachings, everybody's gonna smell something different with the sweetgrass. So some people might smell cinnamon or vanilla or um, cookies. <laughs> my eldest son smells carrot cake. Uh, my little guy uh, smells churros. You know, as soon as I said churros, he's like, yeah, it's churros. I, I smell marshmallows, but that's just me. So everybody's going to smell something a little different. Again, not right or wrong, just different. That's okay. And sweetgrass helps us to make really good decisions because if we look at it, we'll it up close. So every strand of the braid has seven blades of sweetgrass in it, and each represents the seven teachings. It also represents our seven generations. So whenever we want to make a good decision, we have to weigh the um, all of our generations. We have to look seven generations back. What did our ancestors do to bring us to this moment? Or respecting and honoring everything that they've left for us, that foundation that they have left for us, all the sacrifices that they went through, all the hardships that they had to endure, the teachings that they left for us, and you know how how they brought us to this moment. Are we honoring and respecting everything that they have done? And are we making them proud? And then we think seven generations forward. What will this decision do for our future generation? Will it leave a better world for them? Will it leave more teachings for them? Or will it leave um, a world for them to clean up? And so when we make decisions like that, we make way better decisions. Because it's not just about us. It's not just about a voting cycle. But it's actually being mindful, making our ancestors proud, and leaving a legacy for our future generations. And so when we burn sweetgrass, it really helps us focus um students love sweetgrass because with that focus that it helps you to bring in um if you're getting overwhelmed with school it helps you to learn i don't know why there's something magical about it it actually helps your brain uh which is really really wonderful it's also really good for um alzheimer's on uh, alzheimer's and dementia they did a study on it and they found that the elders that were smudging daily with um sweetgrass actually had 30% uh, less loss of memories, less outbursts, and so it shows the power of our traditional medicines. I like it from science proof thing we've done for thousands of years because I was born. So, all right, that's sweet grass, and that is in the east with grandfather's son because it's all about balance. We have grandfather's son in the east, we have grandmother in the west. All right, the next medicine that we have is in the south. We always follow the sun, and so uh, in Korea, we follow the sun. In Mohawk, they go the other way around. So they're reflecting the sky, whereas we follow the sun. Um, and that's good, not right or wrong, just different. And so this is cedar. Cedar is a phenomenal medicine. It's um, really about honoring our body. It's about honoring the physical changes that we go through in our adolescence. It's about connecting to all of our relations. So the plants, the animals, the flyers, the crawlers, all of those things, even the stones, they have something to teach us. And so it teaches us about really recognizing and honoring our body, because this is our vessel this lifetime, but also recognizing the relationship that we have with all of the plants and animals and how they not only can lead us and teach us, but how they sustain us and how we sustain each other. And cedar, we breathe with it. So when we exhale, it inhales and vice versa. And so it teaches us about that. A cyclical relationship that we have with plants and how we have to maintain those circles of connection and of relationships not only with the plants and the animals but with each other and so, so a cyclical nature it's also really good it's antibacterial antifungal and antiviral it also has an antihistamine in it so if you're ever feeling a little under the weather uh, a cup of cedar tea make sure you're rolling boil it for about 10 to 15 minutes just to pull all that good medicine out and then it kind of looks like like sludgy and smells a little piney when you make your tea um, and it tastes like crap so make sure you put lots of honey in it um, I have some people like the taste of it me not so much but 
it's a miracle. There's been so many times that I've just avoided getting sick all together because I have had cedar tea. Um, and as far as allergies go, <laughs> that was well timed. Um, uh, Any time I'm feeling like a little coffee or wheezy, I just have a little cedar tea and it actually helps a lot. Even with my asthma, um, when I get really bad asthma, I'll just boil the cedar on the stove and I'll breathe in the vapors and it really, really helps my lungs. Um, you can put it in the bath, it's right for your skin, uh, grind it up with some coconut oil uh, and put it on eczema. It's phenomenal. It's just really good all around. It's just generally a good healing medicine. So don't have too much of it though, because um, if you're kind of chewing on the sprigs, it's really fibrous. So you're going to poop for days. So. <laughs> the next medicine we have is in the West and that is sage. And this is buffalo sage. There's actually 27 different varieties of sage that grow around the world. Um, buffalo sage is really predominant here in the prairies. Um, and it was one of our trading staples just because it does grow so big and tall here. And so I'm going to just pull it off the stem. And so um, it is connected to, to Grandmother Moon, and Grandmother Moon is connected to water. So uh, water is considered the best medicine um, because we cycle with Grandmother Moon. We have that cleansing ceremony uh, every 28 days, just like Grandmother Moon. And it teaches us about honoring our emotions, honoring our heart medicine, honoring the connection that we have to uh, community and um, how important it is to have our emotions. I think in our society now they're viewed as a weakness, but they're not. They're our greatest strength because if it wasn't for our emotions, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have strong families or strong friendships, strong relationships. And so we need that medicine to be able to honor that. Sage helps us to honor that. And so people who are going through a really hard time um, and are just really emotional and need to just cleanse and let those tears flow, uh, sage really helps us to do that. And it's really important that we kind of honor our tears when they do come and not hold them back because they're a gift. They just show us how incredibly strong and beautiful and powerful our um, emotions are and how important they are. So if we're crying, it's for a reason. So don't hide it. Don't deny it. Honor it. Like we have tear ceremonies where we hardcore ugly cry. Very unattractive ceremony, but very healing. All right. So I pulled all of them off. Uh, our lovely handy dandy stick here. Um, so we pull them off the stem before we use them, um, just because we only want to use the leaves. When we gift it to someone, we want to uh, weave them on the stem. So in Cree teachings, we always leave our medicines on the stem to give to people, because um, when we pull off the leaves, it holds our energy and our intention, and we don't want to dictate how somebody's going to pray. So just out of respect for what they want to do with the medicine, we always leave it on the stem for them. So. And this is the Cree Crunch, and this is the Blackfoot Roll. Work them together, and then it turns out like this really lovely little ball, which is great. And when we rub it, it actually unlocks the oils in it, so it changes the smell. Smelling um, sage when you're up on the hill or wherever you're picking doesn't smell like much, but then as soon as you pull it off and you roll it in your hands, it just unlocks this incredible smell. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful for the gifts stage that the gift to me. All right, and the last medicine that we have as we go to the east, or sorry, to the north, <laughs> is tobacco. And tobacco is spirit medicine. When we give somebody tobacco, it's saying thank you from our spirit to their spirit. Being a spirit medicine, we don't actually take it into our bodies. Uh, we use it to pray. So we can smudge with it. So if we're in a pipe ceremony and you see somebody puffing on the pipe, we're not actually breathing it into our lungs. We're puffing on it, we're smudging with it, we're blowing down our bodies, or we're bringing it over ourselves, but we're never actually breathing it in because it's too sacred of a medicine. It's not meant for us. This is why people will get sick if they're smokers. Um, and even when we smoke, it's not that we're actually addicted to the plant. It's that we have trauma or sadness or things that we need to heal from. And so it teaches us that we have to let those things go and heal on our own. But creators there to support us uh, if we use the medicine in a good way. And so with this, um, my teachings of tobacco uh, <laughs> kind of came full circle. So I've been trying to quit smoking and quit and start, quit and start, quit and start. And then one day it just hit me that this was a sacred medicine. And 
I thought that I had healed a lot of portions of my life of trauma. I broke that cycle of intergenerational trauma with my own kids. But then I had to realize I wasn't just carrying my pain. I was actually carrying my mom's pain and my cookum's pain and all of my family's pain. And so I had to be able to forgive and honor them and pray for their healing as well. And then as soon as I was able to do that, of course, I was able to quit smoking. And then as soon as I quit smoking, everybody started giving me tobacco. That's just how it works. Uh, when we lay tobacco down for someone to say a prayer, it's that we're giving something before we ask for something. Uh, when we take tobacco with us to pick any of our traditional medicines, because we don't want to just take and take and take, we always want to give something back because it's all about that cycle um, and the reciprocation and being grateful. And so we always ask permission before we take a plant and we always gift something, whether it be water, whether it be tobacco, whether it be part of ourselves. Um, some people have given hair. Some people have given other aspects of themselves um, or just food or whatever they have. And so when we sprinkle tobacco on the ground, so in Cree, we sprinkle tobacco uh, on the plant and let the wind take it to the plant. In Blackfoot, you actually take the tobacco, put it on the ground and rub it in so Mother Earth and the plant will be her. But those are similar teachings, but slightly different. And that's okay. Not right or wrong, just different. And so tobacco, high in phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen. So it helps plants grow back faster. Uh, I put tobacco <laughs> in part of my garden. Uh, and the part of my garden that I put tobacco, those plants are thriving. And the part of my garden that I forgot to put tobacco, those plants aren't doing so good. So um, after this podcast or after the uh, live stream, I'm actually going to go and gift the rest of this tobacco to my garden because I think it deserves it. And hopefully it'll deter the squirrels because we're having a fall in war with the squirrels right now. So, um, so that's the Nakon, that's in the north. That's our connection to creator. That's, uh, of course, the winter. And it teaches us about faith. It teaches us about um, honoring spirit. Because even though we can't spirit, uh, see spirit, we know it's there. Just like air. We know air is there because we breathe, even though we can't see it. And so it teaches us about that connection there. And so... I am grabbing my magic. So uh, we tend to prefer to light our smudge with more um, more natural products. If you don't have anything on hand and all you have is lighter, then you can definitely go that way. But if you can, please, please, please use matches or, you know, flint and stone or something. <laughs> and so oh, this is my magic. So when you smudge, there's no right or wrong way to smudge. You'll notice that I took off my earrings uh, because metal will hold energy and you want to let go of anything that you're carrying. So anything that isn't serving you, anything that is kind of pulling you down, just get rid of it, let it go. Um, and so by taking off our jewelry, we're actually grounding ourselves and being natural um, with Creator. But you don't necessarily have to. This is just my teaching. So like I said, just be comfortable. I want you to be comfortable with um, the experience because nobody can tell you the right or wrong way to pray it's all up to you and all prayer is is intention okay so i'm going to just light my smudge here whoop, whoop. and i'm going to fan it with my hand never blow on it because your breath is your life and your life is precious and you don't waste that for anybody let's take that down a little bit you can see it but there we go. So this is the smudge. You can do it virtually through your computer or please smudge along if you have some supplies. Just cleaning my hands and I'm washing my hands. So anything that I'm carrying, I just get rid of. And then I bring it over my body four times. It's one of the four directions of my body. Then I smudge my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that crosses my path. And also so I can be open, keep my mind open, make sure that I don't hold judgment in my mind. Smudge my ears, so I can listen twice as much as I speak, so I can be open to hear those messages that Creator sends me, and also so I can be humble enough to hear what people are saying. Smudge my eyes, so I see all of the beauty creators made around me. So I can be open to see all of the gifts that are on my path. And to see people for who they truly are. Because that is a gift to see the beauty of them. 
I switch my nose so I can smell danger and cookie, <laughs> but also so I can be intuitive. I smudge my mouth so I can speak true and kind words that are helpful and benefit mankind. First, I always ask myself, is it truthful? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Is it respectful? If it's none of those things, don't say it, don't do it. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. This is why I teach that to my kids. Watch my throat. I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime. I give voice to the voiceless. I'm also thankful for my singing because it helps me share with the creator and it helps create a work through. Watch my heart. So I can show unconditional love to my friends, family, all of those around me, but also so I can be gentle with myself. My stomach, so all of the food that I eat will nourish my body. I smudge my lungs, so I breathe good, clean air. I smudge my womanhood, because I'm very thankful to be a woman and a mother in this time. I'm going to smudge my shoulders and my back, so I can carry all of the responsibilities that creators give to me, grace and humility. I smudge my arms. my hands so I can do the good work that creators put me here to do. I'm very thankful for my hands this white time. They help me to create beautiful things as an artist. Smudge my legs so I can walk this red road in a good way. That's the path of outworking spirituality. And then I smudge my feet so I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth and I tread lightly upon her, honoring her with every step. And then if there's anywhere else in your body that you need a little extra love, and so um, ooh, my middle back has been a real sore lately. I smudge that. If there's somebody in your life that you want to send a little love and appreciation to, maybe they're going through a hard time. Maybe they need some uh, healing. It can be physical healing. It can be emotional healing. It can be mental healing. Uh, or it can be spiritual healing. Um, just hold them in your heart and really send that intention, that appreciation, that love, and you know, hope that MG, your creator, or God, Allah, Buddha, whoever you pray to, is going to help guide them on their path, and make their path gentle. And then when you're all done, you can say hi, hi, or magwitch, merci, or gracia, or however you say thank you in your language. And then when you're all done, you can just put your munch to the side. So I'm going to share the Four Directions song. Um, just, it's been in my head all day, <laughs> and I really, really love it. Um, and it, uh, I learned it as the Four Directions song, or the Four Winds song. And um, it's also known as the Cherokee Morning song. Uh, it was Robbie Robertson and Ulali, I believe, put it out um, quite some time ago. Uh, but I had learned it from an elder in ceremony. Just uh, teaches us how to really acknowledge the Four Winds, acknowledge that balance. That's all around us. Acknowledge that each direction has a purpose. It has um, a guiding thing that we need to listen to. Every every direction the wind comes from uh, has a different path to lead us down. And so it's really about um, appreciating and understanding that balance, appreciating and understanding um, the directions that come to us and honoring every aspect of our being and every aspect of the world around us. Because without balance, what do we get? So I'm going to pull my drum out. This is also known as Wendayaho. This is a Dorito in my drum. I have no idea how to pop it. All right. <laughs> so this is Wendayaho, four directions. We oh, need Doritos.
traveling <laughs> so I'm going to be making a trip up north a little bit and um, when we travel we always have to kind of pray for the, the Thunderbird to guide us on the right path but um, also we have traveling songs that help guide us on the right path and so the more I think about traveling the more the song has really been going through my head because I want of course our path to be gentle our path to be clear um, our path to be safe and um, it also encourages those things that are going to happen on our path to happen uh, in a gentle way so that we can learn from them and grow from them. And so this song has really been on my mind. Um, so my elder who originally shared this song with me, uh, Sharon Fritter, um, I really I miss her guidance. I miss her wisdom. I miss her spirit um, and her smile. Um, she was just always so inspiring and so gentle. And when you asked her for advice, <laughs> you you already knew what she was going to say. She was like, what do you think? <laughs> and um, it was always really beautiful to know that we were on the right path. Um, and so whenever I sing this song, I can almost hear the voice in my head. And so I'm very thankful for that. I was also thankful for my friends Ashley and um, Yolanda, who shared this song again. And, I'd almost forgotten it until that moment. I was like, oh, this is so, so important. And they had learned it from their elder on the other side of the country um, in the East. And it was just incredible to know how those stories and how those songs travel and how those connections can just develop over such a long way. Uh, but we're all family. And when we reconnect with our siblings and you know, our family members from around the world, because we're all brothers and sisters, uh, it's just... It's a blessing. And so, um, yeah. Would you share that one? If I don't have a career, so I can. <laughs> Never mind, I'm going to share the creator song first, and then I'm going to share the chocolate like, one.
shared it with me. She learned it quite some time ago. And when I went to visit my aunt and I actually sang it, uh, it was amazing because my aunt actually started, my great auntie, she's in the hospital and sometimes when she's so tired, she just slips into Cree um, because she's suffering from Parkinson's as well as uh, Alzheimer's. And so when I started singing this, she started singing along and it was just such, such a blessing, such a gift. To be able to share that and be able to bring that um, just full circle. Uh, I cried actually in sweat when um, I just reflected upon that. I thought it was just such a gift. Uh, so I'm very, very humbled and thankful for this song. Um, yeah. And for some reason, the traveling song is just one of those songs. When it wants to be sung, it'll be sung. But sometimes it'll It'll hang out in the back of your mind and you won't be able to sing it. But um, I'm going to sing the Community Birds song. So this is a song that I wrote. Um, you wrote another one? You no, know, this is a while ago, baby. That's my next one. And um, this song is um, about that, that voice that we have together as a community. And I think especially now, it's quite important to recognize the voices that we have together, that we all acknowledge each other's voices in that circle, but we also respect each other's voice in that circle. Um, we're going through a time where we're hearing the loudest voices, and sometimes the loudest voices can be hurtful. You know, so we have to dial it back and say, what kind of a voice and what aspect of a voice do I want to share with the world? Um, it's very, very easy to uh, let your voice be heard on social media without thinking of the ramifications that you're going to make people feel. So instead of fighting or arguing or creating tension or a toxic relationship with someone that maybe has been your friend for years and years and years, and instead of burning that bridge, get together face to face and have those conversations, build those relationships, uh, mask to mask, I suppose I would be in hell, but we have a harder time fighting if we're not distanced from each other. We have a harder time arguing when we're together in the same room. We can see each other's faces, we can hear each other's voices, we can be in each other's presence. And this song teaches us about the importance of sharing our voices together as one, the unity that is important in our voices. And so this is um, yes, it's a bird song, a community bird song. That's also um, the Blue Jay. And the Blue Jay has the voice for community. The Blue Jay um, warns birds when something off, when there's danger coming, it will call out. Uh, it can actually mimic different bird sounds to warn them in their own language. And so um, it's very cognizant of how to speak to others. And we need sometimes to be able to do that ourselves.
I feel like they come through me and I just share them um, and teach them in a meaningful way. Mm. Normally I have backup singers, but <laughs> this is a song that's um, it's a call and response. I'll try and sing both parts, but um, it's a chickadee song. I have a lot of bird songs. <laughs> so the chickadee calls out. Uh, to each other, they warn each other, they let each other know if something's going on, they have conversations at the end of the day. Most birds have conversations at the end of the day. Um, if anybody has a big bird tree <laughs> behind them, they know at the end of the day when the birds are coming back from their day, they just talk to each other and they sometimes talk over each other. Hi, Mom. Hey, can you sing with me? Yes. Okay, cool. Sweet. You want your door? Uh, you want your door? Okay. Um, so the chickadee has uh, this way they communicate with each other by actually listening. And so you'll hear chickadee dee 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 dee, and then you'll hear a little pause before another one uh, responds, cheeseburger. <laughs> or one of the little kids I was teaching the other day was like, hey, sweetie. I'm like, I like that a little bit better, but cheeseburger is rather funny. But um, it's uh, just that gift of being able to hear each other, fully and completely be able to. I love you too. To be able to honor each other's voices, be able to actually listen to each other, because if somebody's speaking to us and we're planning what we're going to say before they're done speaking, are we actually listening or are we, you know, not listening at all? If we expect people to listen to us, we have to listen to them. And the chickadee teaches us this why we have two ears and one mouth to listen twice as much as we speak, and so we can honor each other with words. Also, the chickadee always is so joyful. And we want to share our messages of joy with people. Nobody really likes hanging out with people who are just talking negatively all the time. So it's recognizing those patterns in ourselves. And when we talk positively, things in our world change into, in a positive light. And so it's recognizing that that energy attracts. And the chickadee knows this. This is why it's a fat half bird. It can't take itself too seriously because all it says is its own name, a cheeseburger. So <laughs> this is the chickadee song. And it is a call and response. So Linda's going to do the second part. Yep. So please, if you feel like following along. Okay, Mom, can I can I say something? Absolutely. I invited a bunch of my Discord friends to watch the stream. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah. And they, like, they were questioning it, and they were, like, yelling at me about it, but, like, they don't even know. <laughs> they don't even know how long this has survived, how it survived through genocide and whatnot. Yeah. We are survivors. Yes, we are. All right. Take it easy. Yep.
Yeah, give me a second. <laughs> Alright, you want to see out of your breath? <laughs> um, I don't even know if they're watching, honestly. Hmm. Alright, so I think <laughs> the last one I want to share um, is the bear picking one. You can only share it with uh, <laughs> with a second voice or with many, many voices. So um, this is also called the grandmother song. It was shared with me with, um, from Elder Carrie Moore. But it was funny because when I heard it, it just it stuck in my spirit, it stuck in my soul. And um, I can remember hearing it when I was younger, which is a strange thing. Um, and so when we sing it, it teaches us how to honor each other's voices, of course, that seems to be the thing. Um, but um, it teaches us how to find our own voice. And so the story behind the song is many, 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 many generations ago, uh, before, you know, cell phones and, you know, um, telephones and, you know, any sort of social media whatsoever. Internet. <laughs> the internet. Without um, internet. Without internet, without even dial-up or SOS or, you know, Morse code, before any of those communications. None of that. No. Um, we we would all go berry picking together, and the grandmothers would have to call out. They'd have to reach us. But they wouldn't say, yo, where you at? Because that would be ridiculous and totally not relevant to the era. And it wouldn't <laughs> even be their own language. So. Exactly. But they would call out using their own voice. And so as everybody would go berry picking, um, the kids would, of course, run around. Uh, they'd be climbing trees and skipping stones and playing with the hag and hitting each other with sticks because that hasn't changed in thousands of years. <laughs> kids still hit each other with sticks. Uh, it's just now we have like, lightsabers and pool noodles and nerf things and, you know, the bed hasn't changed. It's still sticks. Uh, then, of course, um, the teenage girls would be off. They really weren't picking as many berries as they should be because they'd be too busy talking about their crushes. Oh, no. Like, oh my gosh, did you see that guy's mock at us? <laughs> he looks like so super cute. <laughs> I'm about to change about this generation. <laughs> oh my god, don't do that ever again. I'm just laughing too hard. Um, actually, <laughs> the boys, though, uh, once in Cree culture, once you turn 12, you're considered on your path to becoming an adult. And so um, the, the boys would go um, hunting with the men. Two spirit people would go hunting with the men as well as go berry picking with the women so that they would know all of the teachings and they would be able to share all of the teachings and they'd be able to fill in where um, wherever the nation needed them. And so those kids would be gone. But uh, up until that point, they were raised with the grandmothers, they were raised with the women. So always, uh, they always knew how to honor and respect uh, two-spirit people as well as honor and respect women um, because they knew the grandmothers were the ones that made decisions for everyone in the nation. Um, and uh, when we're grandmothers made those decisions, when women were the ones making those decisions, uh, it was that they were making sure that everybody's voice was heard, that everybody was valued, that everybody was loved and appreciated and taken into account, and no one got left behind. And so this is why it was so important to honor everyone in our nation. Um, and so as everybody would get scattered to the four directions, and it was time to go, of course, the mothers were the ones, and the aunties and the two square people were the ones that actually finished berry cooking for the whole nation. Um, when it was time to go, the grandmothers would, of course, call out, but, of course, using their own voice. And so, um, I would hear, and be like, oh, well, that's my cocoa. I should probably call back. And then I would hear, listen, there's Linda Nader, and he's there, and then I would hear, and there's my cousin Bob, you know, she's over there, and then I would hear, all right, there's my cousin Stephanie, I know she's over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's my Auntie George, I know she's over there. And so as you would hear these voices, you would know where everyone was and that it was time to come home. Now this was really important because in times of war, you would have safe camp, but you wouldn't just walk in and be like, hey, is everybody okay? Because you didn't know. You didn't know if it was safe, you didn't know if your camp was compromised. And so you would wait, you would wait until silence fell and until darkness fell. And then you would call out. And I would hear, uh, and then I'd be like, okay, Lyndon's safe. And then I'd hear, ah! okay, Ashlyn's safe. I know she's over there. And then I'd hear, there's my cousin Michelle. She's a little weird, but she's safe. She's over there. And then I would hear, there's my cousin Megan. I know she's over there. And then I would hear, ooh, 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 ooh. all right, there's my other cousin. I know she's over there. And then I would hear, all right, there's my mom. My mom always makes me laugh. I can't do her voice with a straight face, but she's over there and she's safe. And then you would know that everyone was safe and it was time to come home. And then you'd rebuild camp and you'd celebrate the fact that you found each other again. And now we don't use our voices like we used to. Well, I mean, you do. I do. You definitely person. do. 
So uh, yeah, I use mine in Walmart, I use mine at the grocery store because when it's time to go, uh, if you call out mom, like if you call out for your kids, or if a kid calls out mom, 20 kids, turn, or 20 kids will turn around and be like, oh wait, you're not mine. My 20 moms will turn around. Um, but when I call out, I'll hear, all right, cool, there's Lyndon usually over in the electronics section. And then I'll hear, mom, could you just not, you're embarrassing me. There's Cloud usually in the deli. I find yeah. him. And now the girls are starting to learn how uh, embarrassing I am, and they just look mortified. So <laughs> we're going to get there. Gonna get there. Uh, what does mortified mean? Like, just really embarrassed. Okay. Really embarrassed. <laughs> like wanting to crawl into a, a hole and die, so embarrassed. What? <laughs> but, and occasionally I'll hear, hey, you were at my school. So that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, when we do it, when we find our voice, we just want to use it all the time. And so sometimes when we're looking for our voice, it's a little hard to find because we don't use it all the time. And so you got to figure out where in your body is it getting stuck and how can we release it? Is it getting stuck here in your mind because sometimes you overthink things or you're worried too much about what other people think of you. And so that's holding your voice down. Uh, is it getting stuck here in your mouth? Because oftentimes you're just not speaking out. You're not saying what you want to say and you're not standing up for yourself or those people that you need to stand up for, and that's taking your voice away. Is it getting stuck here in your throat? Because um, oftentimes you're just not speaking out at all. Oops, those are switched. Uh, so your mouth is, sometimes you just talk for the sake of talking, and what you truly want to say is becoming. And so it's almost like disingenuous. So it's about finding your truth and actually speaking it, and not just saying what you think people want to hear. Um, and here it's, it's actually speaking out. It's actually calling out um, and letting, letting the world around you know who you are and that you're deserving um, and that your voice counts and matters. And it's also standing up for those other voices that need to be heard. Um, is it getting stuck here um, in your shoulders or across your chest or on your back, especially in your back? So those are the voices that you put on for other people, whether it be friends or family or work or school or your kids. And so sometimes when you're putting on all of these voices for other people, your true self gets lost in that process. And so it's recognizing that sometimes you just need to be your genuine self and your friends and family will love you no matter what. You don't have to use them by putting on something that's not you. You can be you and still be loved. Um, is it getting stuck here in your heart? So this is where pain, hurt, trauma, sadness, that holds our voice down too. And it's recognizing that the only way that we, need, we can heal is by loving ourselves. And so it's really creating that gentleness for ourselves and creating and fostering that self-love that we need because that helps our voice to come out. Is it getting stuck here in our tummy? Because that is um, pain, sadness, trauma. Uh, or no, that's, that's all of that bad things we say to ourselves. So that's our self-worth. That's our self-esteem. And so anytime you're like, you suck, it holds your voice down. Anytime you're like, I can't do this, or I'm not worthy. Um, anytime you say something negatively to yourself, it holds your voice down, it pushes it down. And so just know that you're amazing. And if you're not going to talk like that to someone else, don't talk like that to yourself. Be kind to yourself and let your voice come out. Where's it getting stuck here in your belly button? Because that's where your voice is. It's right here in your belly button. And you don't take a deep enough breath, sometimes it's hard to push it out. If it's got a lot of stuff holding it down, sometimes it's hard to pick, uh, push it out. If you're not connecting to your spirit, it's hard to push it out. So just you might have to take a few deep breaths to let that voice out and to let it soar. And sometimes when we find our voice um, for the first time, we laugh hysterically because we can't believe that sound came out of our bodies. Uh, sometimes we cry because it carries so much stuff within it, it pulls all of this stuff out. But no matter what, it feels amazing and we want to continue to do it again and again and again because it's healing, it's cathartic, it's this release and it's reconnection with who you are. And then you as well can be the crazy person or Walmart like me. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So uh, at the end of the song, we're going to let our voices out. And the song itself is the grandmother calling out and you're calling back. The words are, Weya heya, Weya weya heya. Can I practice too? Yeah. We are here, 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 we are
We are hey, uh, we are hey, uh. So we're going to sing that through four times out of the four directions of the medicine wheel. Uh, the third round, we're actually going to get really quiet because that's the part of the story where we're looking for their safe camp. And then the fourth part, we found each other, so we're going to celebrate, we're going to get loud, and then at the end, we're going to just let out our voices, we're going to freak out everybody in the neighborhood as they're walking their dogs and stuff. Probably in the city because there's... <laughs> How do you check the viewer count? I have no idea. We'll figure it out about uh, <laughs> No, that's a brand Uh um <laughs> So this is her picking song, grandmother's song. And I call it the voices song. Here we go. yourself, take care of your families, and you know, show love to um, all of the people who are on the front lines, to train to advocate for our all of our voices to be heard in a meaningful way, because we are all connected, we are all equal, and we all deserve to know each other and to learn from each other and to grow together, and that's the only way that we can move forward uh, as a community. All my relations I have to my which see you next week. All right, now I gotta figure out how to end this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Bye, hi guys. Bye.